How's it going, everybody? Alright, I've been playing around with a great big transformer here that I got out of an old microwave, and I'm noticing some interesting effects when it comes to resonance. Okay, and um, basically, I've got a 9 90 volt neon there that's plugged in and that's to protect the um, collector and the emitter so basically the high voltage spikes transient spikes that come through this thing that neon protects it and it will only light up when it's got 90 volts and a certain amount of uh, milliamps running through it and this is just a normal resonant circuit everybody knows this but uh, what's interesting about this transformer is um, I found some effects that seem to resonate and keep that neon lit for quite a while even with the power off and I've built different ones, you can see I've got one there and a few other ones that I've built but um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and show you I'm going to have my power supply here I'm just going to turn it on you can see I've got it set at 90 volts and it's probably pumping out about I don't know 10 milliamps yeah you can see there it's sort of fluctuating it's about 10 milliamps let's say 10 milliamps you can see the neon bulb is going real quick now my camera seems to be very slow because that neon is almost steady on but the camera seems to be flickering so this may not come out accurately on the camera but um yeah let's just see I'll just I'm just gonna flip the switch here and turn it off Okay, if you watch neon, a few seconds and it's off. The interesting thing though is if I put some capacitors on, and I'm going to hook them up to the primary coil, put that back on. Okay, I'm on. Stay on there. Okay, and my negative obviously to my emitter right there there you go and now I'll switch it on to 9 volts same draw same effect but I turn that off the neon stays on for a lot longer and that's still going but it's off and just to prove that it's no finicky business here I'll turn it on and instead of turning it off I'm just going to unplug it so this is the main lead that goes from the power supply so I'll get this in one shot so I'm just going to unplug this see not plugged in and the neon's still going and still going and still going and still going and still going that's 90 volts that's resonating through that transformer and now it's off and these capacitors obviously and these are just 35 volt 2200 microfarad Electrolytic, there's two of them, and they're in, they're paralleled, as you can see there. But it's not connected to the actual, you know, where you would be collecting it normally off the collector. There's nothing there. I'm stumped by this. It seems that the flyback is coming back into the positive and somehow recharging these capacitors and really resonating. Now the odd thing is on the base, I've got a resistor, this is my variable resistor toy, and right now it's on sitting on 86k. Now anywhere within this range it will pretty much do the same effect. Um, but it's very, very interesting. Now the other interesting is thing is, when I connect, I might just do that quickly right now, if I do connect the output, say to 
another of the same type of electrolytic capacitor. So let's just take the output that we have, plug that in to the positive, take another lead from the negative, and plug that into the negative. Okay, and then we'll get our little multimeter here. I'll plug these things in. And it's very hard working with one hand. Sorry about the ca shonky camera work. But, um, yeah, that's what happens when you don't have a sexy assistant. And mine's away at the moment. <laughs> okay. So plugged in. Okay, so the capacitor's actually got 5.21 volts on it. Okay. Now, power supply's still running, but the positive is not there. Now watch what happens. Let me just get, try and get this in the shot. Now I'm just going to tap, just quickly tap this positive. Now the neon won't light because now it has an output into the capacitor. But the capacitor is going to charge and it's just going to keep on going. And for as long as that neon was lighting and resonating, that capacitor still charges. So ready? Tap. And there she blows. And that's just through the resonation. So it, that transformer is resonating. And it's continuously charging that capacitor. And still going. I haven't done any calculations or anything yet. It just seems very interesting. Now we get to a point, and because of the leakage effect in capacitors, it's going to start leaking off the voltage. And I think it stopped. And now we'll just wait for it to go down a point. It's still probably slightly resonating. Come on. Okay, it's completely off. It's okay. I'm not gonna wait that long for it. Okay, I'm just gonna tap it again. Tap. And it's completely off. See, off. Nothing plugged into it. And it's still going. Just a tap. So there's a resonance between these capacitors and this transformer with its own self-resonance inside. At least that's the way I understand it. I'm probably completely wrong, but... And then I'm taking that resonance and whatever is left over into this capacitor. Now, I have tried dumping this capacitor by tapping it into this one. But that just discharges this one basically, and then it starts recharging this one again, but you never get the same amount. But that's not the point. You're never supposed to loop back these systems. These are open-based systems, as we all know. Anybody watching this and interested in actually watching this knows, there you go, went down a bit, knows these. You do not hook up the charge back to the, uh, the recharge, sorry, back to the charge. It's just, you don't do it. You can't. You can't mix the energies. So let's just do that again, just for fun. Just going to lightly, quickly tap it. That's it. See? Not connected. Man, she's resonating and she's charging. Now I have seen a few YouTube videos. There was a... Jewel Thief Ringer that somebody developed a while back. I um, can't remember who that was. But they had diodes and leaky diodes and things like that. Well, there's no diodes here. Absolutely none. No diodes. The only resistor is this resistor here that's going to the base. The only diodes at this moment are these ones that are the output diodes that go to this capacitor. But, um,. Yeah, I'm sure if you could get a very efficient maybe timing circuit, you could maybe 
once this dies out, pulse that quickly to these capacitors, quickly disconnect and then have this one charge up again and go back and forth for a very, very long time. Now it's not these lights either because I've tried that. You know, just turn these lights off. Because these are um halogens or whatever they are. So at first I thought it might be that. But no, it's not that either. Let's just give it another go. Tap. And there she blows. See? Now obviously these capacitors are getting charged with 9 volts and almost like no amperage. But then the fact that the resin resonance keeps it going for this long I just find it extremely fascinating. I'm gonna keep experimenting, see what I can do with this. Um, let's just see that uh, neon go again. So I'm gonna disconnect the actual this capacitor. So the neon should fly on now instead of it charging. Let's just give that a cut tap. Neon comes on, it stays on, see? Still disconnected. See, I'll turn the power supply off as well. Still going. Not charging because it's not connected. It's still going. So it's this resonance. Now, usually when you plug in something to charge, that resonance should get destroyed. But in this case, that resonance keeps going and just keeps charging that capacitor. So yeah. Well, that's my rant at the moment. Something interesting. I don't know if it's new or not. I don't, I don't really care. I just thought it was something interesting. Because I haven't posted in a while and uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Keep experimenting. Keep having fun. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there. Alright. Take it easy. Okay. Something I did forget to mention is that you can do this at different voltages. So for instance, I've actually just got 1.5 volts there. That's it. Same effect. Now it's not as long and you need to really tweak this res uh, resistance onto this base. But, let's just watch that. Where's my neon? There it is. Just a tap. And there she blows. Can't really see it with tap. She blows. And those sporadic bigger pulses and such, I think they're just a camera effect. Because what I'm seeing in real life is just a steady, very slow pulse down. And it still charges the capacitor. So the cap capacitor is at 8.49 volts. Connect it up to the diodes. Get my trusty little. And it's still at 1.5 volts. Tap it, watch the capacitor. See? Disconnected. Capacitor rises. It gets charged. Now, higher voltages. See? It's not going to charge up as much as if it was 9 volts or even higher voltages. But, hmm. Yeah, just something interesting. And I did have to change the resistance, obviously. So I'm at uh, 22k at the moment onto the base. I do have this diode here. Um, this was an old transistor. It's a 2N3055. It's like one of these. These were my old leftovers from when I used to do the monopole motors and things like that. I don't think I ever YouTube those, but those was just my experimentations. Um, so yeah, just one of those left over. I haven't tried this without that diode yet. And I'm going to try obviously a few other things, see if I can extend this for a while. Maybe even change the type of capacitors, so on and so forth. But yeah, alright. If anybody's done this or knows how this works or wants to jump in and replicate and so on and so forth, let me know and I'll try and draw up, draw up a schematic of how I uh, put all this together. Um, that's the transformer. 
you want to have a look. I don't know if that means anything to anybody. It was out of an old Panasonic, very, very old, about 10 year old. Um, microwave. So yeah, microwave is actually down there in pieces. But um, yeah. So yeah. Alright. Catch you later, everyone.